Hi, welcome to Focus Forward. My name is Tom Corley. I'm the best-selling author of the book Rich Habits, and I have with us today a fantastic guest. Marco Cadiz was raised in a small town in Slovenia where he learned the traditional European values of pride and craftsmanship, integrity in your business, and the importance of helping others. After studying law and journalism, Marco became a correspondent for CNN International World Report. It was with this journalistic angst in 1998 that he discovered international travelers did not have a fair and easy way to find and purchase airfare. This discovery would rewrite his career path, drive him to move 6,000 miles away from his hometown, and set in motion a research project that was 12 years in the making. The research project, accompanied with a team of travel agents, software developers, and his wife, Darja, was launched in 2012 as fairboom.com. Well, welcome uh, to our show here, Marco. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. Thank Can you. Can you tell us a little thanks bit about your website, fairboom.com? Well, basically, fairboom.com really focuses on what I think has been missing uh, in travel for a long time. It's what I call the real deal. It is combining the traditional knowledge of the traditional travel agent and uh, you know, combining it with finding the lowest uh, possible fares. And the biggest thing that people often ask me uh, day after day is what is that real deal? When should I buy a fare? And day after day, I see people who miss the good deals because they don't know that that was a good price. They simply wait too long and then they lose the, the price, they lose the deal. And then of course, they're, they're sorry and they end up paying hundreds more uh, when they purchase too late. So what we did on Fairboom really is we have, uh, we have developed technology that identifies the lowest possible fares at any given moment. And once we find and identify those fares, we tag them with a real deal, find, with a real deal logo. And we uh, basically let people know that way that this is the lowest fare and that they should purchase immediately. Otherwise, they're going to be sorry. Well, you know, it's finding a deal is one thing, but how do you know that you've got a good deal unless you're an expert like yourself? Well, the way to know really is to have access to a lot of data essentially and this is something that we do uh, in our business. What we do is we aggregate all fares for all user searches and we're talking millions and millions of searches. To give you an idea, our database currently contains I think about 150 million past user searches and based on those searches, we can map out to our users the lowest possible fares to their given destination based obviously on their origin. So based on past searches, we can tell you uh, what is that real deal, what is the best deal. Uh, and the way it really works is, the exciting thing about it is that we can uh, aggregate data across seasons. So for example, we don't just tell you, hey, Hey, you know, for an August 1st departure, uh, here is the lowest fare. What we will do is we will say for summer season, out of all departures from, let's say, June to the end of uh, September, this is the lowest fare to your destination. And that certainly is the real deal. And of course, we tell you which travel dates apply to this fare. When you're looking at traveling, uh, there's business and there's personal. Mm -hmm. um, is there a difference with respect to the airlines in how they actually price the business travel versus the personal travel? Well, there is a difference, but it, it really depends. <laughs> well, I'll say yes. The short answer is yes. And the long answer is it depends what you choose. Nobody forces business travel to purchase those corporate fares. The reason they purchase these fares is typically because those fares come with less restrictions. The non-corporate fares are typically non-refundable or they come with high penalties. And business people, especially in domestic market, need to really change their flights very often. So they prefer to pay a little bit more, but of course get those uh, perks, if you will, of being able to change their fares. But other than that, there really isn't much difference. Is there pricing? Is pricing the only thing that you really should be looking at? Are there other variables that are equally as important and actually uh, when you are just focused on the pricing, uh, you can find out that 
and realize that I, you know, these other variables are more significant and uh, I made a mistake? Well, I would say time is the most significant factor. And I mean time of, that you invest into searching for uh, the lowest fare. Uh, time after time again, you know, statistics have shown, analysis have shown that people value a time over money. That's, that's a fact. Uh, but, you know, again, going back to your original question, it's really um, what you have to consider when you are purchasing or actually shopping for flights are really three things. Number one is flexibility. So how flex flexible you are uh, in terms of your travel dates and how flexible you are perhaps in terms of your destination. Uh, the second thing is your travel comfort. How do you want to travel? Do you care about the quality of the airline that you wish to, that you're considering? Do you care about having to change airports, you know, to, to your final destination? Do you care about perhaps even paying for overnight stays in certain destinations to get that lower fare? And finally, the third thing is available budget. How much money do you have available, um, um, you know, for your trip? How what? Fairboom.com is your website that helps guide people. How does it help them uh, find all of these best deals, the best pricing, uh, you know, the, the different variables that uh, make uh, a good travel experience? There, I would say there are two different components where we really help people, and they're distinctly different. Number one component is, I'll call it the flexibility component. If you're flexible, we offer to you what I had mentioned earlier, the flight map which really displays to you the, uh, the, the, you know, the world map with fares to major de destinations, uh, basically with lowest fares to major destinations highlighted on that map. So essentially it allows you to understand how much it costs to fly to a certain destination in a certain uh, period, such as summer, winter, autumn, etc. So that's number one tool. But of course here you have to be flexible. If you're inflexible with your dates, the tool is pretty much useless. Uh, the second thing that this tool does for you is, for example, let's say you want to fly into a city like Manchester, but you find on this map that a flight to London might cost you $300 less. So you might want to change your destination to London and take a train to Manchester, for example, and just save a bunch of money there, plus you will see London in the process. So again, it's flexibility based. It, you know, it, it's really the, the flexibility uh, tool uh, that saves you literally hundreds of dollars by helping you select the right destination at the right dates. Now the second distinctly, uh, I will say, different uh, mechanism or tool that we offer is what we call best value sorting. Now traditional sites and what people are most, I will just say, plainly obsessed with is searching for the lowest price alone. So the flights get sorted by the lowest price, people tend to click on the top result, which is the lowest price, and they're done because they're happy to get the best deal. But the truth is that savvy travelers, I will often say more affluent people who still, for example, go to traditional travel agents, go there for a reason. Because they don't want just the cheapest flight, they want to have the best quality flight. And here is where we come in with the best value sorting. In the best value, we attribute cost, literal cost, to all the annoyances, if you will, of traveling. Meaning cost of airport changes, cost of overnight stays, cost of uh, additional luggage, because we do look at how many bags are allowed for free. And also, we look at the airline quality, uh, at the airline quality uh, that, that, you know, in the offer. So essentially, all of these factors are combined into what we call the best value. And we put on top those flights and those deals, which are, according to our statistical engine, the best in terms of these costs. Uh, that, sound, that sounds incredible. That, uh best value sorting, that's uh, unique. Uh, that's unique to, to Fairboom. Well, I hope currently it is. I'm sure you know, others will try and follow us, obviously. This is a very fiercely competitive market. But right now, we hope we're the pioneers in this, uh, in this area. And when individuals uh, go on to Fairboom.com and they go and visit your site for these two tools, uh, do they do you give them different scenarios? They can uh, try different uh, options and come up with, uh, you know, different flexibility options and different uh, best value sorting options. Is that something that's typical of uh, the experience? 
Well, what we do that's a little differently on this topic is really we offer people the ability to search uh, what we call plus or minus three days from a specified departure date. So, except, you know, for example, if you want to leave, let's say, on September 4th, we will search from September 1 to September 7. So, you know, on the departure and then on the return, we can repeat the same thing. So we're talking seven days on the, on the departure and seven days on the return. If you times seven times seven, that's 49 combinations of travel dates which are being searched simultaneously to find the lowest fare. So that's number one flexibility that we offer, which we think is pretty unique. The second thing we offer is what we call radius search. It allows you to search within a 175 mile radius from your specified departure point to find perhaps even lower fares. So for example, if you're, let's say, located, you know, I from LA originally, so essentially if you're located uh, in Santa Ana, which is south of the Los Angeles International Airport, you can safely search Santa Ana and you can say, you know, give me 175 mile radius and it will pick up all the airports within uh, the, you know, this huge radius to find you the best uh, deals uh, from multiple airports. And the same goes, and I think it's even more interesting when you fly into Europe, Europe has a ton of small cities which are worth visiting. But if you use the radius search, you can really focus on where you ultimately want to go. So perhaps to a place like Florence, you can say, I want to fly into Florence. But with that huge radius, it will pick up major airports such as Milan to the north and Rome to the south. So you're covering an enormous area. And this way, you're able to really find the best deal at all times. So these are really the things that we, we offer in terms of uh, these flexible, uh, you know, flexibility searching. That's fantastic. That, this is so, so needed in um, business and for people that are really trying to get by in their budget. Um, is there a best time to use Fairboom? Is, in other words, I've heard that uh, if you want to get your best deal, you've got to go out four months, five months, six months. Is that accurate? And if so, when should people really be jumping on Fairboom uh, to take advantage of all these great tools and get the best value, the best uh, flexibility options and all that? Well. Frankly, <laughs> the best time is, is as follows. Uh, when you are looking at departures during high season, which is typically defined as summer months, being you know, from June to the end of August, you should be buying, in my opinion, and basically on a statistical uh, basis, about four months in advance. This is when the airplanes are not yet full and airlines are still willing to offer some attractive prices to get people to actually fill up those seats quickly. So four months in advance for high season. I advise people to buy five months in advance for peak season, which is the holiday season, essentially around the New Year's. That's when planes are absolutely packed and people oftentimes wait and wait and wait because fares are you know, more expensive for peak season and people just tend to overweight, as I call it, and then they obviously pay, end up paying huge amounts of money. Uh, you know, $500, $600 more on international flights. And then if we're, going, if we're talking about the shoulder season, which is typically spring and autumn, you should be buying about two months in advance. And then for low season, which is winter, uh, you know, the winter, depending on the destination, obviously, where you're going, uh, you should be buying probably, I would say, two months to one month in advance. You might even get a good deal two weeks in advance. So it's hard to say. I think for low season, uh, you know, you are able to wait, you might get some good deals in the end, but I prefer personally to buy about a month in advance. Obviously, using the tools that we offer to our customers, so the flight mapping tool and additional tool, which we call Fair Cruncher, which is place to you uh, airfares within a one month, uh, one month graph. So basically, every day in a month, we display to you the lowest possible fare. So using these tools, you really uh, have, I would say, a pretty easy job landing your cheap deal. As long as you plan ahead and you give yourself enough time, that is key. If you come in at the last minute, you know, and it, it's a, it's let's say peak season or high season travel, and you just want to get a best deal and say, hey, Mark, you know, I want to get a really good deal, you know, in two weeks from today, for example, it's summertime right now. You want to say, I want to get a good deal to London in two weeks. I'll say, hey. Probably you won't. I can get you a decent deal, but, but certainly not a good, you know, not an excellent deal. Marco, is there a difference in pricing uh, when you're talking about groups versus just an individual? Are there, are there different price points 
that they offer the airlines? Very different. Yes, groups are different because it's much, it's called speculative uh, selling essentially. Groups are speculative because you don't know if the group will materialize in the end. That's the issue. Typically, what travel agencies do is they will buy, you know, let's say 20, 30, 40, 50 seats because they obviously plan a tour or, or some sort and they don't have passenger names yet. And that tour might actually not be sold in, you know, in the end. So airlines typically, typically will not. Uh, excellent group rates. Now there are exceptions. There are airlines that actually do offer you know great group rates, uh, but those have to be purchased directly through a travel agency. Now individual fares, which are you know what everybody's buying online, uh, are different because they are so-called instant purchase fares. So typically they have to be sold, ticketed actually within 24 hours of the reservation. Some instant purchase fares are actually they're not instant purchase, but some fares are during to give us about three or four days to ticket, but those are very rare. Nowadays, really have to pay for and ticket the reservation within 24 hours of, of the actual reservation. So that's what gives airlines the security because now they have your money, the fare is secured, it's sold, and their, you know, their inventory has been, has been uh, you know, made profitable. Marco, uh, uh, fareboom.com seems to me, uh, in terms of as a business model, has tremendous value to uh, big companies who are planning uh, these group excursions, these events, these conferences. Uh, have you seen that as a, um, the, where the your business to your website is being driven because of these conferences, or do you see that as a, a strong business model for fairboom.com? Well, frankly, right now, we're more of a retail and corporate, I'll say small business uh, outlet. Uh, we don't really, uh, do conferences that much because there there is a distinct difference in what we do and what you know what it, what you're suggesting with group travel. Group travel really requires uh, a business to come to a travel agency and say, "Hey, I've got this conference, and there might be 50 or 100 or 200 people attending, and please get me the best deals on my flights and hotels." And then the agent itself goes out and for that specific conference and for those specific travel days negotiates deals with the hotels and with the airlines. Uh, so that's a very specific business. We are more in the business of, I would say, general retail where we actually pull millions of fares in real time uh, and we could, you know, we are combining millions of possible combinations of fares and flights to find the lowest deals in real time for retail and corporate travel. Conferences are more limited in scope. They really are more of a traditional uh, travel agency business, if you will, where you focus on a particular event on a particular travel dates. It, do you, does Fairboom partner with any specific airlines or are you just truly independent and offer independent advice? No, we are truly independent. We don't partner with any airlines. Uh, we partner with big uh, distributors for airlines. They're called air consolidators. We partner with these businesses, but we distribute their fares completely impartially, and our engine runs based on our algorithms, which are non-paid. They're, they're non-sponsored, and so we're completely independent. International travel, you know, everybody knows, is very expensive. Um, mm -hmm. And a lot of people go on vacations. They go to Europe, they go to the United States, they travel all over the place, and the cost of uh, these flights is sometimes beyond their budget. Uh, do you have any tips that you can offer our viewers on strategies that they can use, maybe through fairboom.com, that will help them get the best price and the best quality for their international travel? Well, I'll go back to the uh you know, initial uh, topic that we discussed, which is really flexibility. I think number, my number one tip is office flexibility. Plan ahead and be flexible with your dates and be flexible with your departure. And of course, on this token, I'll go back to the map feature. Use our map feature, use the Faribu map feature, see what the lowest fares are in certain seasons and drop, try then to use these dates. Uh, that would be my main advice when it comes to really the fairboom tool. So again, use the map, be flexible, use the fare cruncher feature, investigate the fares on a 30-day scale, um, and of course, find the best deal for yourself. Now, another thing that you can uh, consider, for example, is obviously what's also popular is the mileage program. Some people like to enroll in mileage programs and thus, you know, earn free airline tickets. 
And that might be an interesting thing. Uh, what many people don't know, actually, I think it's valuable advice, is that airlines such as uh, American Airlines or Delta have so-called e-shops where you can actually go online and you can buy stuff like clothes or, or you know, LCD TVs or, you know, whatever. You can buy a bunch of stuff online and you can earn from 2 to $10. I'm sorry, from 2 to 10 miles for every dollar that you spend. So essentially... You can be shopping and then early miles at the same time. So this can go towards paying for a free ticket. So those are all options that you can actually take advantage of. You know, a lot of uh, credit card companies offer reward dollars, reward points, mm -hmm. mileage. Is there any one that's better than the other? Or I mean, what's the optimal use of these reward dollars for, for <laughs> airline travel? Well, uh, that's a question really uh, because it, 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 it's, it's a complex answer really. Uh, I'll tell you why. Uh, the, the main uh, thing to consider is the availability of rewards and actually whether you want to redeem a free ticket which actually re requires you to use so-called uh, reward fares or if you just want to upgrade to a higher cabin such as you know business class or first you know in domestic travel or international so those are distinctly different issues to consider now let me explain why uh, the airlines when it comes to free tickets make a limited amount of free tickets uh, available to the, to the to the public to the people who actually have accrued miles for example, the worst performing airlines in terms of being able to redeem miles are Delta and, and U.S. Airways. Uh, they only offer, uh, from what I understand, a 36% of the time that people wanted to purchase actually or actually redeem their rewards, they were actually available. Uh, if you look at then uh, American Airlines, which is another hugely popular program, has a 47% availability. This has been really great information. Can you leave our audience with three simple tips, the best tips that are out there, uh, that fairboom.com, uh, where they, it can help them uh, best in their travel experience. Sure. I, there are three things to consider, I believe. It's, first of all, know what you need and what you want. Uh, know where you want to go, how much time you want to spend there, and be flexible. Expand your horizons. That would be one tip, obviously. Second tip is plan ahead. Last minute bookings are typically bad deals, period, unless you're, tra you're traveling uh, in low season. And the third tip is use the right research tools, such as the Fairboom flight map, such as the Fairboom fare cruncher, and we also offer fare alerts, which alert you when a fare falls. So those will be my three tips. Finally, the final tip will be consider the value of your quality time. Time matters, and don't waste hours and days on your computer to save 50 bucks. Find that low fare, buy it, and then stop, uh, uh, stop tracking these fares. Forget about it. You bought it. You should be happy. Prepare for your trip. Marco, thank you so much. Uh, Fareboom.com is uh, the website. Got a lot of great tools there for flexibility and for finding the best value. And I want to thank you for being on Focus Forward today. This is Tom Corley with Focus Forward, and thanks for being with us today.